little while, let's understand one very important another factor about the index files where we categorize our index file into two categories. One is the sparse index file and the other is dense index file. What is it and how the two are different? Let's understand from these pictures. I'm considering as an example that we have an employee file where we have employee ID, employee name, salary, department ID, etc. fields stored for that employee file. And whatever employee file I have would be known as data file. It is stored on my secondary memory. Okay. So in one of the scenario, my, uh, my index is built on employee ID. And I am saying that my employee file is actually sorted on in employee ID. So here is that example. So in this file, where I have employee ID shown here, this of the values I am just not showing up. I'm just showing that, okay, I have employee ID, which is the primary key, and I have that in the sorted manner. So my file is actually in the sorted manner of employee ID. And I'm here considering that, suppose we are taking each block consuming two records. So here, two records are taken up in this block one, block two, block three, block four, and the block five, okay? So these are nothing but then the records, okay, record one, suppose you can just say record one, record two, record three, record four, and so on. So these are the records, and here the blocking factor for this data file is each block can contain two records. So I have these values, these records as it is. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an index file on this employee ID, which is a sorted one. So here comes the index file picture. So this is my index file. In making an index file means putting up some field of your data file with the blocking pointers or the reference pointers so that you can easily access the file. Okay, so this uh, index file where I'm going to store the employee ID because I know all the employee IDs are sorted. So what I need to store here is nothing but then the block pointer. Okay, so an index file where the data field is stored along with the block pointer and it has the minimum number of entries as compared to the number of entries in the data file, then that index file is known as sparse index file. Now you see here, I have just taken the first record value of each block 10, 30, 50, 70 and 90. And now here I would simply take a block pointer. So for this block, whatever is the address, I will just point to that. Similarly here, I'm just going to point to this, to this, to this and to this. Dependent on whatever number of blocks are consumed for storing that file, that much number of entries are going to be here. Okay. So here, if somebody comes and puts a query, find out the, uh, oh, give me the records whether employee ID is 30 or employee ID is 40. So you simply come to this point, okay, look for this value 30, okay. So here onwards, so 30 and 50, whatever value 40 you're saying, it's in between these two. So I would just simply take up this block and move, move forward and make a search there. And I'm going to find out this 40 right there. So one block X is here and one block X is here, correct. So a sparse index file is nothing but then when the file is actually sorted on certain field and when you are making the indexing, then you have to store one record for each block of your data file. And in such a case, the, the index file entries are far smaller than the entries in the data file. You can see here we have far more entries and here very less. And it's a very small example. When you go to a bigger size example, the difference can be easily visible. So that kind of index file is known as sparse. And now you see it's only a kind of index file. It's not that it's a primary, it's cluster or it's secondary. It's just saying that this kind of file is actually designed based on what is the nature of the field that you are using for making index that will be defining primary cluster or the second. Now let's go to the second type that is a dense index file. Now here again I have taken the employee file which is on the secondary memory and I am taking up the data file as employee IDs are given and this time my employee IDs are actually not 
sorted. Please don't get confused that here you have taken 10 to 100, here you are taking some other numbers just in order to randomize it. Just uh, consider that that is a different employee file, this is a different employee file if you are getting confused. So because the file was not sorted already, so I have to sort it now in the index file and so I have to place as many number of records here as many were present there. Furthermore. I have to put the record pointer to point each and every record. So like one goes there, two comes here, okay, four goes up there, five comes here, eight goes there, nine goes there, like this, correct? And ten goes there. Likewise, you will make the record pointer values to, to point to the each and every record. So you can understand that in such a index file, the number of entries in the index file are almost equivalent to the data file entries. The size of the file is quite big. It's dense in nature. It's pointing to each and every one. But of course, if you make another file on top of it, then that will become a sparse. But this particular one is a dense. Why? Because it's an unordered field. So usually, when you are making a index file on some unordered field at the first level you get a dense file okay based on the type of the field it is and when you are making the index file on some ordered field then you are likely to get a sparse index file the difference between the two is this is going to consume the less space it is going to give you less number of entries and this is going to consume more space it is going to have the more number of entries so this becomes the two concept of index file nature which is sparse and dense why you need to understand is because frequently in your questions you will see these terms we made a sparse index file we made a dense index file like that so quickly i will just go with one question which will summarize the concept of sparse and dense as well as a concept of blocking factor now here i have a one very good question to understand multiple factors you read it carefully. Suppose block holds either three records or ten key pointer pairs. A block is holding either the three record or ten key pointer pairs. What does this line say? A block can hold this much. Capacity of the block is this much. It says what? It says nothing but then the blocking factor. How many records you can have in a block is nothing but in the blocking factor. Now further let's go. If a data file contains n distinct records, okay, if, if a data file contains n distinct records, then how many blocks do we need to hold that data file and its dense index? So two things you have to find out. Number of blocks required for holding or storing the data file and number of blocks required to store the dense index file okay first of all first thing first so let's say that what is given to us in the question given to us is a blocking factor for the data file as well as the blocking factor for the dense index file okay what is it a block can hold either three records so what is it three record per block that is the data file blocking factor okay and key pointer pair now you see you you might be thinking ma'am how you know that this one is for the data file and this one is for the index file simple it's saying three records and ten key pointer pair key pointer pair means the key field value plus the pointer record pointer or the block pointer it's a pair what do we store in the index file the field value and the pointer either the block or the record we don't consider which whichever pointer is it we, we don't have we don't have to we don't have to bother about which pointer is it right now we just know that it's a field and a pointer pair that says nothing but the index file and so we know that it can store 10 such pair 10 such records per block. So 10 records per block. So that becomes a 
blocking factor. So once we know the blocking factor, we also know the number of records are n. Okay, it's given here. If a data file contains n distinct records, so we have n records. Now what is the number of blocks required? Number of blocks required for the data file. We know that we have n records. We also know that three record can go in one block. So how many blocks are required? Nothing but then the n by three blocks. Simple. How many blocks are required? n by three blocks. Now here, similarly here, number of blocks required for the tens index file. How many records are there? Now you see it's important here. Why did I write n? Because it's a dense file. So whatever number of records are there in your data file, for each record there will be a respective record in the index file. Because it is dense, it is unordered. Understand the importance of dense word here. Okay, that will make all the difference. For each record in the data file, one record in the index file. Okay, so how many records in the index file? n records so if you have n records and you also know that 10 records will get stored in one block then what is your number of block required n by 10 simple okay you must be wondering why did you take the term n it's just for your understanding this question is designed just for your understanding you can put any value for n here you will get your answers correct but you could understand that how the change will come now everyone, I made a small change in this question. Everything is as it is that we have the similar blocking factor for the data file as well as a similar blocking factor for the index file. The only change I have made is that you don't have a dense index file now. You have a sparse index file. So this one is not dense now. This one is sparse. So if a data file contains n distinct record as it is, then how many blocks do we need to hold that data file and its sparse index? So you have everything, blocking factor for data file, blocking factor for sparse index, the number of records. Now you have to find out the number of blocks required for data file and the number of blocks required for sparse index file. And this question I'm leaving for you as it is. So I'm not going to give answer for this. I would expect you to solve this by yourself and write down the answer in the comment section if you have any difficulty in finding it out you can just ask me i'll answer you right there with this i will just end up this video and i will come in the next video where we are going to begin with the indexing so you get ready understand all the concepts which we need to understand the indexing concept better see you once again very soon till then bye bye take care